guys, thanks for entering my competition. The winner will receive a copy of my book. I will announce the winner's name near the end of this video along with the answers to the questions which were number one, in your opinion what are ghosts and number two, should we be concerned about them? Firstly, I'd like to cover some typical answers people often give to these questions. Then I'd like to give real life examples from people I knew, people I know currently, from my own life, my mother's life and others who have encountered ghost-like spirits. Also from people who have wrote about it. There's many books by former mediums, psychics and spiritualists who used to talk to ghosts and spirits. And I'd like to tell you just a little bit about that today as well. When I ask people what are ghosts, some people say they are earthbound spirits trapped here due to a violent death or they have unfinished business to attend to. I'd like to humbly suggest if that was true, they would have left earth eventually after attending to unfinished business. But we hear of spirits who claim to be ghosts of people who died centuries ago. Plus, many people die with unresolved issues. If it caused people to be earthbound, then we'd all be seeing ghosts all the time, including our dead relatives who we were close to and our ancestors who had unresolved issues. I suggest most people who die have unresolved business. If a soul could be trapped on earth due to a violent death, if that was true, we'd be seeing ghosts everywhere. Think of the millions of people since time began who have died worldwide with unresolved issues or from violent or sudden deaths. Places like hospitals, homes for the elderly and so on would be rife with ghosts. Factories that had industrial accidents, the coal mines and mills of Victorian times, countries with wars, famines and floods, nations that had epidemics and natural disasters would have millions of ghosts appearing all the time. My own mother was trained to be a spiritualist medium and committed suicide, a violent death, yet she never returned to me with her unresolved issues. If anyone was able to be a ghost, you'd think an ex-spiritualist medium would. Some say that some ghosts are good and friendly and don't mean you any harm, but can be confused thinking you're living in their territory. Can I suggest, we've all saw this in movies, where a good ghost gets confused and then attacks you? Where is the logic in that? If you can't even trust good ghosts, if they have the potential to become nasty. In these cases, the label of good ghost is a contradiction. Some say we shouldn't be concerned about ghosts unless it tries to pester you or possess you. And if it does, you should run away. I suggest that even being pestered by a ghost is something you can do without. But whether it's a mildly annoying or a more evil ghost, where could you run to? Unless you know how to properly protect yourself and evict them, you'd be at their mercy and unable to control them. Some say that spirits have never turned on them yet, so why worry? Or that no one has ever been killed by spirits that they know of. I'd suggest spirits can turn on people, but usually only if you tell them to leave. They don't tend to cause much trouble if you allow them to stay. You may have had a friendly ghost-like spirit in your home for decades and it only turns nasty when you try to evict it. I'll give some real life examples soon of people who were attacked by spirits. People like mediums, psychics, etc. where spirits attempted to take their lives. And also a witch who claimed her spirit visitors attempted to kill her on more than one occasion. Eventually her friends who were witches actually reported her dead in mysterious circumstances. There's been many mediums and new agers pushed to suicide by spirits who drove them to it. Therefore ghosts have been responsible for the death of people or even tormenting mediums so much that they have ended up insane and in psychiatric hospitals. 
When I was a spiritualist for 15 years, this was something myself and other mediums were well aware of. Some say there are good spirits and angels, but there are mischievous and dark spirits and angels. But we shouldn't really label them all as evil. Can I suggest that I would agree, but only if you could be sure that those appearing to be good really are good? Think about angels and spirits that are shapeshifters, like in shows Buffy the Vampire Slayer. A spirit who can make itself look and talk like your dead grand's ghost one minute, then, through metamorphosis, it changes itself, taking off that mask and putting on a mask that looks and talks like Michael Jackson one minute, then changing itself again to appear as if an alien, an archangel, or even your friend who's still alive, well able to impersonate these different personas. As shapeshifters are frauds, able to mimic any person, whether dead or alive, then how can you be sure the ghost-like spirit that you are talking to truly is a good, friendly spirit? Again, when I was a spiritualist, I heard of this, and the mediums I knew would even admit that sometimes mischievous spirits like to trick you at a seance and tell you lies impersonating your dead relative, taking on their looks and their voice, so that everyone in the spiritualist church or seance will believe it and be deceived by it, including all the mediums present. The mediums I knew would say such a lying, impersonating spirit is the exception and not the norm. But how can you trust any of these spirits? What if they are all lying impersonators? So if all these ghost-like spirits are able to function like shapeshifters and impersonate dead people or living people, then yes, we can claim they are all evil. Some people say ghosts are trapped here as they died without repentance through Christ. I'd like to question that logic for several reasons. Many spirits that show up at seances even claim to be ghosts of ministers of the gospel. Also, if you accept that those who have died trusting in Jesus are safe eternally, whether you describe it as paradise or heaven, then logic would actually suggest that the opposite of that realm wouldn't be on earth. Also, people dying without repentance in Christ would go into eternity, whether you describe that as hell or Hades, along with Satan and evil spirits. The soul would go to that dark realm and not actually be trapped on earth as this realm isn't everlasting. Also, the Bible doesn't say that unrepentant souls get trapped on earth. At death, people won't be confused which realm to enter because they'll discover the Book of Life already documents their eternal destination and they will be drawn there instantly. Whether a ghost knew Jesus before they died or not, that spirit wouldn't likely to become violent, scream or curse Jesus when an exorcist arrives, yet they do, showing they are not merely an unrepentant dead soul, but are instead an evil spirit. To give an example, I was asked to go to a house and was told it had been haunted for 30 years. The original owner of the house, the woman's mother, had visited spiritualists and thought the spirits in her home were dead family, but then they actually got violent and began to attack people. They even threw a visitor across the room, breaking his nose. Sometimes those spirits impersonated family who were still alive, not just the dead relatives. If they had truly been ghosts, they would not have left when I commanded them in the name of Christ. Yet they did leave, and the house filled with light as their shadows left. A year later when I asked, that home was still clear. I also heard from another ex-occultist about a couple who had visited spiritualists and got messages apparently from their recently dead cousin in New Zealand. Very accurate information, so they were convinced it was him. However, later they actually heard that he was still alive. 
so a spirit had disguised itself as that cousin. My point is that spirits can impersonate the living and the dead so well. Therefore, how can you believe them? How can you trust any ghost? Many mediums have said their good ghosts and spirit guides turned on them unexpectedly. Doris Stokes, the famous English medium, said in one of her books that her spirit guide threw her across the room. In a spiritualist resource called the Religion Philosophical Journal, a medium said after years of talking daily to a spirit she thought was her mother's ghost, she began to realise it was an evil demon as it led her to the very brink of ruin. There's been books published by ex-mediums since the 1950s who reported this too. Victor Ernest, Robert Lee, Raphael Gasson and others reported that their spirit guides or friendly spirits turned on them and when the mediums told them to leave in Jesus' name, the formerly good spirits showed their true evil form, became abusive and left, not able to fight against the power of Christ. In a recent generation, a famous top New Ager, Randall Bayer, experienced this too. He became a Christian and evicted the spirits he used to talk to. They left in Jesus' name and he warned other mediums and wrote of it in a book. You can see a list on my wall on my YouTube channel that actually lists some of these books. I also know of many other ex-mediums who turned to Jesus for the same reason. Again, you can see videos on my YouTube channel, a selection of videos, for example, ex-mediums like Gaz Parker, John Cramphorn, Jim Byrne, Christine Maguire, but there's many more that I do actually know of. When I speak of this on TV and radio, I hear from other ex-mediums who went through this too. In Johanna Michelson's book, where she channeled a spirit that claimed to be Christ until it began to attack her, she stopped being a medium, became a Christian and commanded that false Christ spirit to leave. So can I suggest that we question the true identity of these ghost-like spirits? these spirits that can act like shapeshifters and also can I suggest that we question what source do they truly come from? Where do their powers truly come from and why do they run if you command them to leave in Christ's name? I'm going to refer quickly to what a few ex-mediums say from this booklet Dawn of the New Age by Penfold Books but first, I'd briefly like to say that when I was a spiritualist, my mother was training to be a medium, but we were both attacked by these ghost-like spirits. On the worst night of attack, my mother actually called out, hoping for a better spirit guide to come and rescue her. A being appeared and shone like a beautiful angel, and when he came closer, she saw that he was Lucifer, he actually relayed to her that he was Lucifer. But to her absolute horror, he did not bring light. He had actually got a lot of evil in his eyes and had a very evil atmosphere with him. So my mother suddenly realised that Satan of the Bible was a real being and she shouted on Jesus Christ. She shouted on Jesus until Satan vanished. She didn't become a Christian that night though. She just called out on Jesus' name. Anyway, my mother eventually committed suicide due to such demonic attacks and she's not the only one who's been destroyed by such demons. If you fully research the beliefs of famous mediums who founded modern day spiritualism like Madame Helena Blavatsky and Alice Bailey, you'll find in their books on Theosophy that they said that Lucifer is the God and the source of the New Age movement, that Lucifer is the source of all psychic powers and that spirits are under his authority. Current day mediums, famous mediums like Benjamin Krem and David Spangler also say this. But I would question 
if Lucifer really was a good God, why would he and his spirits turn against you? If you research, you'll also see how spiritualism and Luciferianism are closely linked, but not just within mediumship, but also linked in secret societies and the occult. As a Christian now, I see that the Bible shows me that Lucifer became Satan and he is evil, like a shapeshifter. He can appear masquerading as if he is still an angel of light, even although he and his spirits are now fallen evil angels. They rebelled against God and they aimed to deceive people and keep them away from trusting Jesus for eternal salvation. If you can accept what I'm saying, I suggest that this explains their true identity and the reason why so-called ghosts act so ugly at the name of Jesus. I believe this also shows Christ's lordship and authority over them. The Bible calls them fallen angels and when they appear at seances acting like ghosts, the Bible calls this familiar spirits. These evil spirits are so familiar with your family and ancestors, they can impersonate them very well. At locations like a castle said to be haunted, I suggest they are also fallen angels that are familiar with people of that territory and region and thus can mimic them very well. So it's not a haunting of that location, but rather demonising it. Back to this booklet, Dawn of the New Age. It lists experiences of five New Agers. I'd quickly like to mention one or two. Paul Griffiths was a medium and he called up spirits. One day he had a vision where God warned him about doing this. He later read a Bible and was surprised to see his vision was similar to one in the book of Revelation. He asked Jesus into his life and repented for calling up spirits. When he went home that day, his spirit guides appeared to him and tried to strangle him as they knew he was breaking free from their control. That happened to me too when I was still a spiritualist, a spirit, a spirit that claimed to be the ghost of my dead baby sister actually came and tried to strangle me. Randall Bayer was a top New Ager who wrote books. After one of his national tours, he was acclaimed as one of the top three world authorities on crystal healing. And he wrote this. He said that one night while meditating, he saw a face of darkness. Behind the glittering outer facade of beauty lay a churning face of absolute hatred and unspeakable abominations, the face of demons filled with the power of Satan. He knew he'd seen the real face of the New Age angels he'd been involved with, and he feared if this horrific experience happened again, he might not survive it. The spirits took more control over him until the day he repented and accepted Jesus as Lord and Saviour. Then the demons left him. He stopped being a medium and he wrote of this in his very famous book, Inside the New Age Nightmare. Another New Age medium wrote how she enjoyed many mystical experiences but began to feel an emptiness. She met an old friend, a former medium, and he explained only Christ could fill that empty void. He said her experiences had been counterfeit from fraudulent spirits who lie and betray you by deceiving you. It's Satan's aim to give you whatever pleasure you want, as long as it keeps you from Jesus and the truth, he told her. Another booklet by Penfold Books is titled Angels of Light, where five spiritualists did what the Bible advises and tested these ghost-like spirits to see the reaction to Christ and his blood on the cross. In conclusion, I'd like to make a few points. You might be thinking, if the founders of spiritualism 
said Lucifer is the god of ghosts and spirits that are destined to hell, then we don't want to talk with these spirits now or after our death. And I would agree. So is this a gloom and doom message? No, it's a message of hope. Since myself and other ex-spiritualists came to Jesus, we have not been visited anymore by spirits pretending to be ghosts or spirit guides. If it wasn't for Christ, I may not have survived. It's possible I'd still be threatened and attacked by those spirits who destroyed my mother. Jesus Christ can banish tormenting spirits who aim to keep you captive to their lies of being ghosts. Mediums and psychics are very good-hearted people and I share this with you because it crushes me when I hear of them suffering what we did. To finish, how can you be sure to be protected from evil spirits and how can you be sure to enter heaven when you die? Since myself and other ex-spiritualists have asked Jesus to be our Lord and Saviour, his beautiful and wonderful presence came and was so powerful that those spirits had to leave and never return. You have hope and spiritual protection when you develop an intimate relationship with the living God. Since I left New Age Spiritualism 16 years ago, I've lived in spiritual safety and peace, no longer attacked by so-called ghosts. God has brought spiritual restoration and retribution to me and he's never stopped doing good things for me. When you come to Jesus, his powerful and perfect love casts out all your fears. Receiving his Holy Spirit to indwell you is better than channeling evil spirits through you. His power strengthens you and helps you overcome problems in life. And his power is far greater than any magic spells too. Please consider what I've shared today and see some TV interviews of myself and other ex-New Agers and ex-Mediums on my YouTube channel. Also see the list of books I've mentioned by ex-spiritualists who also discovered the truth about ghosts and found salvation and protection in the Lord Jesus. I would like to announce the winner of my contest is Cantor Crazy who wrote this. Ghosts are demons, not human spirits. As Christians, we should be concerned because the demon's purpose is to deceive unbelievers and keep them from finding and trusting and believing in Christ. They are a reminder that this is a spiritual war over souls and that Christians are to share the gospel in love so that none may perish. The winner will receive a copy of my book soon. Thank you very much for taking part in this contest and for watching today. God bless you.